Newton's first law tells us that an object will remain at rest or in a state of uniform motion unless acted upon by unbalanced forces. So firstly, is the object moving? Yes or no? If the object is not moving, it's at rest, and Newton's first law tells us that the forces must be balanced. That means they're equal and opposite in all directions. If it is moving, then we need to ask about the movement. Is the object changing speed, or is it changing direction? Yes or no? If the object is not changing speed or direction, we say it's got uniform motion, and the forces acting on it must be balanced again. But if the object is, is changing speed or direction, the forces are not balanced. So we say there's a net force acting on the object, causing it to change speed or direction. So that's Newton's first law. Newton's first law can be best understood by using some examples. And the first example we'll look at is one of a book at rest on the table. So the book is not moving. It's stationary. And we need to think about the forces that are acting at a book that's just sat at rest on the table. So here's our book, and here's our table. And we know that the book has weight. It weighs something, and the weight is a force of gravity pulling it down. There must be an equal and opposite force called the support force pushing it back up, and that's because the forces must be balanced. Take the example of an apple falling. As the apple falls, it begins to speed up towards the ground. The apple's accelerating downwards due to gravity acting on it. So the apple's weight, or gravity, pulls it down, making it accelerate. And there'll be a little bit of air resistance working upwards against it too, and that'll increase as the apple speeds up. But overall, we've got a net downward force, which is what's causing the apple to accelerate downwards. Let's have a look at a few more examples. This time, we'll choose some different types of transport. The important thing in every case is always to think about the different forces that are acting on the objects. So a car, for example, driving along a road, and let's imagine the car's driving at a constant speed. Remember that the forces that act on an object will be balanced if an object's traveling at a constant speed or is at rest. And because a car's traveling at a constant speed, that means all the forces acting on it must be balanced. That means they're equal and opposite in all directions. So whatever weight is pulling down, there must be an equal and opposite support force from the road pushing back up. The driving force pushing it forward from the engine must be equal and opposite to the air resistance, which is acting against the car's movement. Or take the example of um, a car accelerating. If the driving force is greater than the friction and the air resistance, the car's actually going to begin to speed up. The drivers push the acceleration pedal to increase the driving force. How about a plane flying along? Imagine a plane going at a constant speed. If the speed is constant, Newton's first law tells us all the forces acting on the plane must be balanced. Now the plane is huge, it's heavy, it's got a big weight. The upward force is called lift. The forward force from the engines is thrust, and that must be equal to the backward force, which is air resistance.